Morning and hello. My name's George Kenny and I'm a systems engineer for Veeam Software operating throughout the UK and Ireland regions. It's going to be a very uh, short and sweet uh, webinar today, just covering off um, the, the key principles around Veeam backup for Microsoft Office 365. Now we're going to explore some of the reasons why this product is relevant, why customers are seeking to extend the scope of their data protection and availability from traditional infrastructure out to the cloud, protecting those SaaS-based ecosystems. So this is not going to be a technical demo. It'll be very short and sweet, just underpinning the real reasons why we've developed this product and the use case scenarios that we and myself see it deployed into. Now, you'll also notice before I start our partnerships at the bottom, these are labels we have integration or alliances with, one of which is Microsoft. So for many years now, we've enjoyed a lengthy and fruitful relationship with Microsoft across a number of our core products, hence why we're one of their most esteemed alliance partners. So to be completely clear, this isn't going to be by any means a Microsoft bashing session around the capabilities they do or don't have with inside Office 365. What we aim to achieve at Veeam is really extending a rich feature set out beyond Office 365 and providing that necessary data protection beyond the scope of their native 365 tool set. Okay, so let's get stuck in. Um, again, we're not going to take too much time on this. We're going to go straight into the meat and, meat and bones. Um, so why do, I need, uh, why do I need a backup? Or more specifically, why do I need uh, a backup or protection of my Microsoft Office 365 estate? So to put the cat amongst the pigeons, we need to understand the roles that you as end users play and the role that Microsoft as a provider plays or a service provider plays in this relationship. The misunderstanding often falls between Microsoft's perceived responsibility and the user's actual responsibility of protecting long-term retention of the Office 365 data. The backup and recoverability that Microsoft provides and what the users assume they are getting are often two totally separate things. So Microsoft Office 365 uses a thing called geo-redundancy, which is often mistaken for, air quotes, backup. A backup from Veeam's perspective takes place when a historical copy of data is made and then stored in either one or several locations. So if data is lost, accidentally deleted or maliciously attacked for whatever reason, there will be an easily accessible copy elsewhere. That's the term of a backup, a true backup. Whereas geo-redundancy in Microsoft's world, on the other hand, protects against site failure, hardware failure. If there's some type of infrastructure crash or outage, your users will remain always on and absolutely oblivious to these underlying issues that Microsoft provide in that system, okay? So on the left-hand side is the customer perception. On the right-hand side is the, the reality that Microsoft does a fantastic job of taking care of that infrastructure. That's their primary focus here, but the data remains the customer's responsibility. So one of the questions uh, that I often ask my customers as a systems engineer, because I'm always rolling my sleeves up and get involved in the, in the mud, um, do you have control of your Office 365 data? Do you have access to all of the items that you need? And the knee-jerk reaction is quite often, of course I do. Microsoft takes care of all of it. But if you really think about it, how sure are you? Microsoft takes care of quite a bit in this deal and provides customers with a great service. However, their primary goal is managing your infrastructure and maintaining uptime to your business and to your users. They are empowering you with the responsibility of your data. So the misconception that Microsoft fully backs up your data on your behalf is quite common. And I do see that. And that demands a shift in mindset. Okay. So just going through to the core reasons and use cases that I often see, there are tons of these, loads available freely on our Veeam website, lots of assets and material on there. So I do recommend you check it out. On this webinar, I am just going to cover off some key points that I find are, are very relevant for me in terms of what I see in the field. So accidental deletion, this is a really common example. 
Um, I started off my career in IT working as a sysadmin. So I'd often have users strolling up to the help desk saying they've deleted a mail or sent something they shouldn't have sent, or they've removed a whole folder, or maybe they've got shared access to a, a resource within Exchange and they copied something into the wrong place or deleted it and now it's all gone Pete Tong. So, you know, mistakes happen, right? This is the real world. We know that problems are going to occur. We know that data is going to be deleted. That is a fact, okay? So users might clear out their mail only to discover several months later that the mail was required. So they don't realize this immediately. And then when they're fine, trying to find that important mail, that important item, that important object, this is where data loss occurs and causes a problem. So the misconception is that this can always be remediated using the native recovery tools within Office 365 itself. So Microsoft provides that geo-redundancy from the ground up but geo-redundancy can't protect you from every type of data loss, okay? So for example, if you delete a user within your environment, whether you meant to or not, that deletion is replicated across the network. The native recycle bins and version histories, including Office 365, can only protect you from data loss in a limited way, which can you know, turn quite a simple recovery into a much bigger problem. Okay, because Office 365 has geo-redundantly deleted that data forever. And that's its, that's its design. It synchronizes the, the inputs that you give it. So retention policy and, and confusion gaps. Um, so Office 365 has limited backup and retention policies that can only fend off situational data loss and is not intended by any means to be an all-encompassing backup solution. So for example, after an employee leaves your company, Microsoft only keeps that ex-employee's data for a total maximum of 90 days, depending on the specific settings that are available. Okay, So Microsoft is only in charge of upholding the retention policy stated in the service agreement. And anything more than that would be considered breaking the contract. They don't want to keep your data longer than you've agreed them to be bound to. So Microsoft are doing exactly what you've agreed for them to do, as per terms of the agreement that you signed up with them, okay? So backing up data associated with ex-employees is normally quite critical for most companies I speak to, you know, legal, compliance, pharmaceutical, lever data is extremely, extremely important to them um, just because of the nature of the business. Um, now, the idea of security um, and essentially hacking often brings to mind the thought of viruses and cyber criminals however businesses experience threats from the inside and they are happening more often than you probably think organizations often fall victim to threats posed by their very own employees both intentionally and unintentionally so access to files and contacts and the people that you've entrusted the most amount of 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 trust into or installed the most amount of trust into, you know, you can't keep an eye on all that all of the time. So Microsoft has no way of determining the difference between a regular user and a potentially terminated employee who's attempting to log in and delete all the critical company data they have before they depart. You know, they're just a user ID as far as Microsoft see it. And now I've worked in sales environments for many years in my career and worked with many sales managers. And I know for a fact that the first thing a salesperson will normally do before they depart their business or they hand their letter of resignation is they'll go and cleanse their desktop and they'll empty their center items. And they'll empty their inbox. It's just almost like they're taught this in day one sales training. You know, it's one of those things that sales guys just do. They wipe everything. So, you know, if you've got a month or two month gestation period before they actually depart the business, then that will exceed and expire the retention policy that's native with inside Office 365. I'm not bashing salespeople, trust me. <laughs> um, so external threats, you know, malware, viruses, ransomware, these have all done some serious damage to organizations globally over the past couple of years, especially. Um, but it's something that we've seen out there and we've read it in things like Computer Weekly and Register that, you know, if you're, the root level access of your, of your Office 365 account becomes compromised, you could see yourself being locked out of your entire Office 365 instance potentially held to ransom, and then potentially, worst yet, suffer data loss across a company-wide level, not just an isolated user or mailbox level. And we have seen this happen. There's been reports of it out there. So that is a, a really, this is the other end of the spectrum. This is a really significant example of data loss where your entire Office 365 account is compromised. This is why at Veeam, we want to absorb that data out of Office 365 and protect it out of that Microsoft platform. So. 
you know, as I explained at the beginning, I'm an SE, so I'm actively involved in rolling my sleeves up and, and helping out customers on site and getting down with the nitty gritty. And one of the most compelling and probably likely scenarios whereby an end user company wants to deploy Veeam backup for Office 365 to protect themselves against deletion uh, was via the corruption of user accounts in their on-prem infrastructure. So as we know what happens in the real world, we federate our on-prem AD with that that is sustained within Office 365. So this user sitting happily in their office is bound by a line of excellent security, protection, infrastructure, allowing them to quite happily go about their business and use the organization's applications, systems, and cloud-based services, okay? Everything's set up for him or her. So IT admins have also enabled something called litigation hold in this scenario within Office 365, which provides a native and proprietary copy of all the emails in and out of their mail servers, which is ideal for baseline recovery. However, if that user account is compromised or deleted, or worse yet, multiple user accounts are deleted en masse, then all those delete requests will be federated through to the Office 365 environment. And this would negate any protection contained within the native Office 365 ecosystem, such as litigation hold. So the data would indeed be gone. Now, even worse in this scenario, one of the problems they alluded to was it might be exacerbated by covering, say, some live users, some levers, or maybe even some personnel who are on vacation. Okay, So in this situation, what happens is the IT department only notified from this guy sitting at his desk that there is a problem when the users affected contact the help desk. They inform they can't log into their account because that's the, the, the thing that the user notices. So the IT department might pick up one or two of the users who have flagged this, recreate the user accounts and deal with the situational data loss and, and damage limitation. But what about all the user accounts that haven't been reported? Those that are on vacation for you know a couple of weeks or have departed the business entirely. How critical is it to the business they have visibility and control of this data? And I know for a fact that many of the customers that I work with have strict policies on levers mailboxes. So obviously, if it's not reported, how do you know that data has been compromised? So this is why in our product, we have a tool set that allows you to have some really helpful mechanisms to assist the backup administrator to have total visibility of those deleted items, obtain reports on them, and then ultimately restore user mailbox information back from them really powerful features that give you that extra layer of data protection. So let's compare side by side what you get with Office 365 natively and what we do at Veeam. This is a chronological list here of all the different camps that you would sit in where mail would live or objects would live with inside Office 365, you know, one week, one month, one year, and, and, and so on and so forth as we move across to the right. So inbox and folder data, if nothing happens, nothing's deleted, nothing's moved, what happens organically is it's moved in something called an archive within Office 365. That's great. In that circumstance, you would not suffer data loss, big green tick. Deleted items, on the other hand, though, after one month, by default, permanently deleted. They're gone. Auto archive data, normally set at one month, moved to the archive, big green tick. Junk emails, after um, slightly under one month, they are permanently deleted from the Office 365 system. They're gone. Or an employee leaves the company, probably more importantly, after one month, that data, that object, is expunged from the Office 365 system. That's just literally the default settings. That's what happens, okay? Now, with Veeam, when we absorb that data out of Office 365, we give the ability to control the number of users you want to back up, you might not wanna you might not wanna do carte blanche across the old environment. You might want to cherry pick maybe the C level board and the middle management team that you back up and protect their mailboxes. You don't care about the users, I don't know, but you can configure that with our software. And then you can put that into whichever location you want, whether that be a private data center, whether that be your on-prem repositories, entirely up to you. And you can set the retention. So you might not want to store the data for five years, maybe you just want a couple of years of protection. That's it. Depends on what the business deems to you. But the important thing is you choose all those criteria and then you have that all backed up with Veeam outside of Office 365. Okay, that's the difference we make. And then just to cover off with this uh, sort of uh, clock wheel here, um, some of the elements that we work within at Veeam, ignore the products in the middle just for the moment. Top right hand corner, this SaaS play is very relevant to this webinar. You know, SaaS is now becoming a really popular play for our, our customers. We're seeing things like salesforce.com and Workday be heavily adopted by um, 
all types of customers. And that's why we've got development for backup for Microsoft uh, Office 365 backup. We want to protect those tool sets that live in SaaS, and we're going to continue to develop. And if you know anything about Veeam, you'll be aware that we have a very busy R&D cycle, always providing new and innovative features. And we're also extremely focused on the feedback we get through our community. So currently today, our Veeam backup for Office 365 supports just Exchange Online, the email messaging platform, okay? However, we are also developing, it's almost at the cusp now, uh, version two of our suite, which will inclu include um, uh, SharePoint Online and OneDrive Business. So, and we'll also have some, some service provider mentality in there and also some technology that allows it to uh, have some under the hood enhancements. Now, more importantly to add at Veeam, we license our Veeam backup for Office 365 against the number of users you wish to protect. So if you have 100 users, but you've got 150 objects or 150 mailboxes, we don't care. We just back up the data associated to protect those users. Okay, so you pay on a per user basis and you get everything with it. There's nothing to see, say you need to back up all of them. It's entirely down to you. So therefore, you get Exchange, SharePoint, OneDrive Business, they will fall into that camp as Microsoft develop more and more applications. They'll just sit into the Veeam backup for Office 365 ecosystem, resulting in a very extremely, a very scalable and, and flexible platform and easy to cost model, as opposed to saying having to pay per module or per component or capacity based per terabyte per gigabyte. We don't care about any of that. We just care about the number of users. So really easy to fathom. So just quickly to show any of you that are particularly interested in what the interface looks like, this is actually um, Veeam Backup for Office 365. You'll see it's very simple infrastructure. And if you are familiar with how um, our traditional product set looks, very similar. In, in this backup infrastructure tab, we have the ability to scale the product. We can have more proxies and more repositories. These are things that drive the workloads with inside the organization. This is where you'd configure your um, Exchange or your um, Office 365 uh, organization. And you'll see we have the ability to back up hybrid deployment. So you can have a hybrid environment. And if we actually look at trying to do a restore, then we can actually say, well, actually, I want to go back to a an earlier point in time, I want to go back to um, a year ago or two years ago. If I do that, I'm going to be consulting the backup file, nothing to do with Office 365. OK, Microsoft could be a, a smoking crater in the ground right now, but you would still have access to emails available via this platform. OK, so we'd want to go and specify a particular point. We can tick these boxes to say only show me items that have been deleted. This is what I was talking about earlier. So we can actually show that to the backup administrator and identify to them at a period of time where data was deleted from their Office 365 environment. We go finish, we'd launch a thing called an explorer. And after that, you see it's very quick because what we're doing right now is we're interacting with the backup file. And straight away, we can see I've got a traditional mailbox here. We've got inboxes, we've got mail items. I can navigate around them. I can open them and read them. Very, very handy, okay? So we could restore entirely that entire user, that entire mailbox back into Office 365 automatically. Everything would be there straight away for them, okay? Or we could actually go in and cherry pick some individual items. I might just want to restore a single email and put that onto my, say, for example, onto my desktop, okay? So you can see there, I've just restored one message file onto my desktop. So very easy to use. We do a lot of webinars and WebEx is demonstrating this software. Today is not the time for it. It wasn't going to be a technical session. I just wanted to give you a glimpse of how the software actually looks. And nothing left for me to say other than thank you. So if you like this video, please give me a like or add some comments on the YouTube link at the bottom. Um, thank you for your time. And I look forward to speaking to you in the future.